Welcome everyone. I'm Troy Hicks. I'm a professor of English and Education at Central Michigan University. And today I have the good fortune of being part of the Media Logs team and introducing Vanessa Otero, who's the founder and CEO of Ad Fontes Media. We have a unique connection. One of her uh, patent attorney colleagues in Denver happens to be one of my best friends from high school, but we won't belabor that story right now. We maybe we'll come back to that if we have time. You can read all about Vanessa's work, but uh, fellow English majors unite. We both have a passion for media literacy, and I've been fortunate enough to hear her speak at the Northeast Media Literacy online conference last year, and we've uh, been able to connect and collaborate a few times since then. So um, without further ado, I'm really going to turn it over to Vanessa here rather quickly. You've probably seen the media bias chart, and that's what brought you here today. And we want to learn all the ways in which uh, she and her team of content um, reviewers put that together. And then that will lead into a further conversation later on. So Vanessa, welcome. Thank you for being here. And we'll let you take it away. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so understanding the analytical methods behind the media bias chart. That's really the most common question that we get when we post a media bias chart online. Uh, folks look at that, look at it and say, well, how'd you come up with that? Uh, especially because a lot of folks will take a look at uh, individual sources that are placed on there, maybe their favorite sources and sort of cross their arms thinking, well, that's too low or too high or too right or too left, I disagree. So how, uh, how do you come up with this? Uh, so we, we get the fortune of hearing uh, lots of criticisms from um, all, all over the, uh, the spectrum, but that really has given us a chance to refine our methodology over the last several years. And, uh, and, and I'll talk about exactly how we rate news today. So again, it, I, I have this little teeny, teeny, tiny media bias chart in there. Don't worry, we've got licensed uh, high resolution copies for you to hand out just for being here today. Uh, the newest one that we released in September has got podcasts and TV on it and everything. So um, don't worry, you'll see plenty of this. Okay, so how exactly do we rate the news? You know, what's our company is a, you know, a news rating company that didn't really exist before rating news for reliability and bias. Those are really big broad categories, how could we possibly, right? So we've rated over 11, uh, 1,100 sources, news sources to date. So what do we mean by news sources in the first place? Well, we rate news and news-like information. So this includes analysis and opinion and politics sites, blogs, misleading and fake news sites, also podcasts and TV shows that are news or ostensibly news. You know, so anything that people get their information from to make decisions, which is unfortunately a bit broader universe than, uh, than we'd like to admit. So we use it, uh, we rate it using a rigorous nonpartisan content analysis methodology. And I'll get into what we mean by content analysis, but who's rating this uh, and how each piece of content is currently manually rated in synchronicity all at the same time by a politically balanced left center right panel of trained ad fontes analysts. So we have a group of uh, nearly 40 uh, current ad fontes analysts. And who are they? Well, they're, um, you know, they're divided left, right, center, and they're diverse across gender, race, uh, age, geography, other important categories. Uh, several of them are teachers, librarians, and journalists. Two thirds of them have advanced degrees. But really, what we're looking for when we recruit analysts is uh, reading comprehension and analytical skills and political knowledge, right? So we have folks from different backgrounds. And uh, as I mentioned, they're left, center, right. How do we come up? Uh, how do we know that they're left, center, right? Well, we have them fill out uh, a 20, uh, 20 issue survey and have them place themselves on left, center, right, uh, you know, strongly, uh, mildly, you know, uh, either direction. And we do it on an issue by issue basis. So it's not a binary, you know, who'd you vote for or, who, or where you registered as a political party because people are usually um, more complex than that. Uh, so we've got everyone from staunch progressives to staunch conservatives. Our work just um, sort of naturally excludes extremists. You know, what, what, our, what our conservatives and progressives uh, have in common and, every, and the folks uh, that are more in the middle are that uh, they sort of disdain the extremism on their own side. They know that it's not uh, very helpful to our discourse. So, um, if you have questions on uh, uh, being an, uh, on our analysts and how we train them, and I can get into that, but we always have analyst applications on our website, and we always have a lot of them because uh, 
of, uh, the folks who, who work with us think it's the greatest job in the world. Uh, so why do we rate sources uh, through content analysis? Well, ad fontes, I'm a big Latin nerd, uh, literally means to the fountain and figuratively it means to the source. So back in the Renaissance and Reformation eras, uh, it was sort of a battle cry. Like we need to find the truth. How do we do that? Let's go to the source. And that's what we do here. Uh, we're not using consumer opinion polling to, uh, you know, to figure out you know, what people think is left and right, what people think is reliable and unreliable. Because if you ask somebody, do you trust MSNBC? Your answer is going to be very different depending on the person. Like if it's a left-leaning person or a right-leaning person, and it really tells you more about the person, right? Uh, so what we do is like we're asking through our analysis uh, methodology, how reliable is this piece of content and how biased is this piece of content? So those, those are really specific questions with a lot of different sub factors. And I'll show you how we do that. So we're getting the answers from going to the source. We're diving into the articles and episodes themselves. So in order to rate a particular news source, we get lots of samples of their articles and their episodes. And yes, that literally means that we are sitting here on Zoom meetings, three people at a time, listening to episodes of podcasts, like the whole thing. It's crazy. Um, we have analysts doing this you know, all day, every day, and they have been doing that uh, this way for over a year. Uh, let's, uh, so I'm going to talk about teaching with the interactive media bias track, because I think most folks on here are educators, and a lot of you may have already used the media bias chart in class. So a couple of recommendations, and I'm going to show you uh, as I, uh, the things that I recommend. One, I recommend starting with a blank media bias chart. Uh, we, have, uh, we have printed ones. But we also have a blank interactive media bias chart that you can find right on our website. Why? Well, we want to discuss the concept first. Um, the overall, you know, what, what does it mean to be more reliable or, you know, okay reliability or less reliable? And what does it mean to be left and right and center uh, before we just dive into saying like, this is what they are, right? Um, we want to discuss those categories. I'll do that. And emphasize that although this is a good reference tool and starting point, they should determine reliability and bias using their critical thinking skills, right? It's not about giving uh, students the answer, it's about giving them the skills to, uh, to identify content uh, and the reliability and bias thereof themselves. It's ultimate goal. Hard to do, as we all know, right? So let's start with the taxonomy. Uh, that's this framework of a you know, two-dimensional chart, this is really the thing that folks have found helpful because to some, uh, some people, it is sort of a revelation that there are some news sources that are better and worse and some that are left and right and some that are really extremely so. So just going over the categories is a really helpful exercise in the first place. So what do those categories in the interactive media bias chart mean? I'm gonna show you, uh, if you go to uh, adfontesmedia.com slash interactive dash media dash bias dash chart, you will find this blank media bias chart. This is the free version uh, if you've been on the site and you've like typed in a bunch of sources and stuff, you'll find that there's there is a paywall at some point because you know we gotta pay the bills. Um, but we uh, have a blank media bias chart and uh, free resources for you. And how I made this blank was uh, by filtering this and, and taking all the sources off. I'll show you that here in a second. But let's talk about these categories. So from top to bottom, we have most reliable, least reliable. And our definition of reliability is, what can you rely on most to be truthfully, factually, and thoroughly informed about things that are important to you and society? It's a really broad definition. It's not just how truthful or how factual it is. Is, those are just pieces of it. So towards the top are the things that are, uh, comprise the best journalism. So 40 and above is actually really good in our system. So um, you're highly reliable, you're generally highly reliable, but there's different categories of them. So there's a complex analysis and mixes of facts reporting and analysis is in the 40 to 48. Those are still very, very good sources for the most part. Um, fact reporting and original fact reporting are the very apex of, of the system because that's the work that journalists do. They go out, they find facts, they bring facts, and without that, the rest of the news ecosystem couldn't exist for better and worse. So we've got uh, this section in the middle between 24 and 40, uh, which is sort of a mixed bag. You know, we can have a lot of different sources in this particular area. Um, there, uh, there's analysis sources, um, 
and there are sources that have high variation in reliability. So they might have some, some good articles, they might have some uh, misleading articles. Uh, that's actually that's actually a technique <laughs> to keep people uh, engaged in uh, less reputable content, unfortunately. You know, you gain credibility by having not all of your stuff be totally um, crazy. Uh, you know, some of the stuff is actually reliable. And that's, uh, that's why I think people are confounded by why, they, why a source that they disagree with on the other side. Like, why would somebody think that, um, you know, uh, you know, Occupy Democrats or, um, you know, or uh, the Gateway Pundit uh, as left and right examples are reliable. It's like, well, not all the stuff is like e extremely out there. Like some of the stuff on there is true. Um, so that, that confuses folks. Then between your 16 and 24 area is a, you know, a grab bag of you know, problematic uh, uh, types of articles. They can be selective or uh, incomplete, use unfair persuasion, uh, propaganda. Uh, things that will fall into this category include um, ad hominem attacks and name calling, um, you know, dehumanization, vilification uh, of others. And that's what those are the sorts of things that will have it drop into the propaganda versus just mere opinion. So uh, below that, we've got things that are misleading things that contain inaccurate and uh, fabricated info. But this is just as, you know, this is the fake news section of the site, you know, uh, of, the, uh, of the chart. There's a lot of stuff that's uh, beyond, uh, that, that's problematic and difficult, even though it's not exactly misleading or fake. Then we've got uh, left, right, uh, middle. So we call middle, middle on purpose. We don't call it neutral uh, because there's no such thing. There's no such thing as unbiased. Everyone's biased, um, but this is just a middle bias. So middle can mean uh, either minimally biased, like they're trying his best to have as minimal bias as possible. It can mean centrist bias, which is a bias or a centrist position. And it can mean balanced. So balance of biases. So middle we say is not necessarily good, right? Middle is just middle. But people get uh, confused. And one of the one of the um, criticisms and uh, challenges of you know, displaying things on a two dimensional chart is that a lot of the sources that are highly fact reporting also happen to be in the middle. There's a high correlation there. Um, so people think that we're saying middle means best. We don't mean middle means best. Middle is just middle. We're just trying to capture what it is. So there's skews left and right. There's a uh, hyperpartisan left and right. There's most extreme left and right. And this is a U.S. contemporary positions of elected officials based axis. We can dive into all of that stuff, um, but I could spend uh, way more than 20 minutes on that. All right, let me show you the sources. Okay, so here's a free, uh, here's a free chart. Okay, uh, there's, there's, so you can filter this in a bunch of different ways. And I wanna show you a couple of things because as I said, we rate these based on articles. So we have a handful of uh, podcasts, uh, TV shows and, uh, and web and print sources on here. So if we display this content piece data, this will show you a bunch of dots in the background. And those are example, those are sample articles that we have actually rated ourselves, okay? And then if you wanted to filter by uh, just, uh, just websites, um, or just uh, podcasts or just TV, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, and so uh, those are all the different ways that you can, uh, so discuss it like a, a first approach to um, introducing students to this would be, you know, talking about why uh, new sources fall up in this area, comparing some sources, uh, some articles that you see from say AP or Reuters or uh, Forbes or FP, and then comparing them to some stuff that you see down here. So some articles from Breitbart, some articles from Daily Cost, and then it's talking about the differences and what, what you can see. If you can show contrasting examples of um, you know, middle or, and um, you know, higher reliability, and then left and right, lower reliability, it's a really good intro point. So let me go back to my uh, my screen here. Um, why teach co through content analysis? Because ultimately, we don't just want to show where we rated it through content analysis. We want to talk about how students can do content analysis themselves. So this is an incomplete Venn diagram of the information literacy uh, landscape. But you know, within media literacy itself, there's a subset which is news literacy, which is hot because you know it's sort of a mess right now. Uh, but even within news literacy, there are a lot of great approaches to teaching how to 
teach news literacy, um, you know, teaching about journalism principles in a journalism class, or teaching how to make media uh, uh, yourselves through a, a media making project. Great approaches. Content analysis is just another one of the, those approaches, and that's the one that we focus on. So. Um, we believe in the importance of being able to evaluate any piece of content because students get bombarded with pieces of content from Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and TikTok and Instagram and like the you know, parents TV sets and uh, your smartphones and apps and everything right so what they want to be like a fielder you know field any piece of content know what to do with it like a baseball or softball player. It's uh, insufficient to just teach things like your shortcuts and heuristics, uh, a few reliable sources uh, and ad hoc examples, right? It's just gonna give you an incomplete story if, you, if that's all you do. But there are a lot of challenges to teaching news literacy um, as you all know. And the things I've heard in my experience over the last few years uh, working with educators is that one, like, a threshold problem is not being confident in what's reliable or biased yourself. Because <laughs> one, of the, one of the main questions we get is, how do I tell what's true in the news? It's, it's not something we can all just take for granted that is just an easy thing to do. This is a complex news landscape. Um, if you remember, like I do, when there were far few new, uh, news sources, you know, there's a handful of TV ones, a handful of uh, print ones, national and, and local. Uh, that's really different from our current news and information environment where there's tens of thousands of information sources. So being able to do content analysis yourself uh, is is a, a great way to overcome that. Other challenge, time. Oh, there's not enough time. Now, how should we teach media literacy and news literacy? Of course, in like full semesters and years uh, and required for everyone from a very young age. But unfortunately, that is not yet the reality, uh, at least not in the United States. Um, so often it falls to um, English language arts teachers and social studies teachers to sort of cram in next to all the other stuff that you've got to teach. Uh, other thing is it's political, if you haven't noticed. Uh, when you're teaching about news literacy, you're teaching about, uh, about sensitive topics, political topics, and even the teaching of news literacy itself can become uh, political. So uh, so what we do, I want to show you a little bit about how we rate sources uh, before we uh, jump into the, uh, uh, the sessions, because this really relates a lot to how um, you know, we, uh, we propose, you know, students should learn how to uh, rate news sources themselves. So how do we, the fundamental question is, how do we uh, come up with these uh, news uh, ratings ourselves, okay? So our, I'm going to show you a software program that our analysts use called CART. It's called Content Analysis Rating Tool. And what you'll see here is a blank media bias chart and a, a link to an article. And so when, whenever our, our analysts have um, you know, articles to rate in their, um, in their queue on a shift, we give them a long list of, uh, of articles that, that they go through uh, day in and day out. And that particular, uh, that particular one was, all right, let's see, let's see, Arizona's uh, bizarre election audit. Let's, let's take a look at this one. So uh, we click on rate that article and we click on that. Okay. That's an article in Forbes magazine. So it just pops out in a different, um, in a different window and our, uh, got a big old ad there. Our um, analysts will read this article, uh, take a few minutes to re uh, read and rate it on their own and then come back uh, and discuss with each other. So we make this available to uh, teachers uh, themselves. And you'll see that we have a slider for reliability. So you can give it an overall score for reliability. We have overall, sc overall score for left and right bias. And we give an overall score. This is our simple version of the uh, of, of the methodology that's designed for students. Uh, we use a more robust methodology for our trained analysts, uh, which looks like, let's like, pop up right here, which looks like this. So, um, okay, we're gonna rate this article. It's got a bunch more sliders because uh, let's say we wanna rate this article from um, famously uh, terrible source, uh, natural news, and we will rate uh, sub factors of expression, 
you know, how it expresses fact analysis opinion. The headline and graphic itself gets a score. The overall veracity score, this is where we do our own internal uh, veracity evaluation methodology. Uh, importance is a sub factor and then overall reliability. And then we've got various different factors for um, for bias that I'll show you, comparison, political position, and language. So the three analysts will rate it on their own. They'll see each other's scores on this uh, article rating detail page. They can see each other's scores right there. And then uh, they'll discuss any discrepancies. Uh, often they agree quite closely right off the bat, but if they're, they spot something that uh, no one else uh, spotted on their team, they can bring it to their attention and uh, adjust their scores as necessary. And their, their scores pretty, pretty often, like our standard deviations on these large point scales are less than three. I mean, they agree really closely because a left, right, and center person can look at a left-leaning opinion article and say, yeah, this is left-leaning opinion, or this is skews right, but it's fact reporting. You know, they can say, um, they can agree on those categorizations. So it's really helpful for students to be able to do this because you find this level of agreement when you're uh, talking about one article. You know, we're, you're not just talking about um, you're not just talking about uh, all of CNN or all of the media and how it's biased. You're talking about this one article. What is it? You know, how can we categorize it? And people can agree and people can talk about actually pretty difficult topics, including abortion and race. Yeah, through this lens, this layer of abstraction of an article. Uh, so it's a great way to, uh, you know, to deal head on with the fact that you're dealing with difficult political topics and guard against accusations of bias that you may face from administrators or parents or the students themselves. Okay. All right. Let's see uh, what else. I, it looks like there's a bunch of there's a bunch of things popping up in chat and I haven't even taken a look because I bet there's some questions in there, but that's okay. A um, couple hey, of- Vanessa, Vanessa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Christina, I think you're monitoring yeah. the chat. Do you want to call forward an interesting comment or question? Yeah, they're actually so, there's a lot happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Channel collecting the questions. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll start with the most recent one. So um, sure. um, one participant was wondering um, about uh, yeah, the complexity of those uh, slider settings. And she was asking if there are simpler templates, especially uh, suited to introduce to work with beginners. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, uh, yeah, this is this is complex. Uh, the, these ones, uh, you know, that's a lot of factors uh, to go into. And so while we do provide, um, you know, materials on how to how to teach with these, um, we we introduce the concept by the sim the simple article rating. Okay, so it's overall reliability and overall bias. Okay, so the simple methodology approach, which we have videos on, is put it in a category, uh, put it in the appropriate category, right? So you, uh, a, a student, will look at this ABC News article, um, you know, does electoral college and election, uh, end election for conservative media. We, you read the, uh, um, the lead here, uh, read the actual news here, um, the actual article, look at the pictures, analyze the content, and based on that, okay, well, uh, what, what is this? Is this an original fact reporting article? I know we didn't spend time actually, you know, doing this, but um, it looks like, you know, based on the fact that it's like poses a question and seeks, seeks to answer some questions uh, based on some factual arguments that um, it's, there's analysis in here, right? So it's going to fall in one of these categories, you know, analysis or complex analysis, maybe opinion, you know, uh, you want to talk to your students about, you know, which category does this go in and why, simply. Um, and these, these cat, the category Category descriptions allow them to, you know, uh, make those basic determinations off, off the bat. So if there's something that has misleading information, they could put it down here. If it's opinion, they could put it here, etc. And then what makes this uh, left and right? Is this a skews left article? Is this, you know, uh, the topic? Is this a more interest to left or right leaning audiences? Does it paint the uh, left or right uh, politicians or figures in, in a, in a uh, positive or negative light? Uh, how, like what language is used to ca characterize these, um, you know, these folks? So um, having them just place them in categories is the simplest way to start. Okay.
Thank you so much, Vanessa. Actually, we have another question which was going in the very same direction since you um, showed us one article as an example. Mm -hmm. um, one participant was wondering if um, the uh, media bias chart also evaluates uh, on the article or the document level. Is there anything you would like to add um, to yes. that? Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to show you the fancy version of the interactive media bias chart, um, where you can see, uh, you know, this is a really busy, um, crowded looking version of the media bias chart. It's our educator pro uh, version, and uh, it's a it's a available by a subscription. So uh, here, let me show you where to uh, look at articles. Okay, just click on this display content piece data. And each one of these dots is an article that we've rated. Okay, so let me show you. Like you can search for any source you've got. So let's look at the Wall Street Journal. Okay, um, I think everyone in your head guess where you think the Wall Street Journal. Is. Oh, you can probably see it already where it's going to land. But here's where it lands. But what are all those dots? Well, that's because of th those are all the individual articles that we've rated for the Wall Street Journal. As you can see, there are ones that are neutral, fact reporting, you know, just minimal bias is uh, possibly minimal as it can get. And then you've got right leaning uh, analysis and opinion articles. And folks uh, are familiar with, you know, right leaning uh, analysis and opinion articles from the Wall Street Journal. And that's what drags this overall score to skews right, even though it has, you know, a mix of all of it. Uh, if you look at the New York Times, then you've got uh, over here. Uh, similar thing. So New York Times has lots of, um, you know, right down the middle articles, some just lean left, but then there are opinions and, and analysis that are further out left. And so you can, ex you can, if you click on one of these, it'll pop out in a new window and you can see, well, do you agree uh, that this has a uh, lean left? Uh, you'll get the paywalls that anyone gets. So, so if you have a subscription that, um, you know, we, we pay for all our subscriptions to our, uh, to the news sources we rate. So you all have to as well. Um, that's okay, support your, support your news outlets. Uh, fortunately, some, <laughs> fortunately and un unfortunately, some of the worst news outlets are free. So uh, here's one on the left. Why is the Gateway Pundit down here? Why is their uh, founder been kicked off Twitter? Well, uh, because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of misleading and um, and inaccurate stories, even though there are some that are you know right leaning but more accurate. Um, let's pick on somebody on the left. Um, okay, over here. So you've got you know uh, this spread of articles. So it's it's easy to just like if you are low on time to teach um, like a full content anal you know, analysis you know, uh, a set of uh, units in, in, your, in your courses, you can use this interactive media bias chart to just explore and, um, and use as a resource. So um, this allows you to search any of a thousand sources, any, any podcast, any TV shows. Um, you'll see that um, people ask us about, um, people ask us about things like, uh, you know, like Fox, Fox News generally, right? There's, there's a lot of different, content on there uh, so that like the fox fox news online is um this, there's a really big spread you know and it's sort of got a, a middling rating for reliability because of this spread um but then you've got some certain shows um in the evening that are less reliable um you've got certain shows that are more reliable on fox Right, so a Fox News viewer uh, will, uh, you know, can relate to this because they know that there are some things that are more reliable and some things uh, are are less reliable, and that uh, that happens on CNN too. We want to, um, so you know, some of the evening shows on CNN are you know further to the left and lower reliability. When, uh, whereas if you have um, you know CNN online uh, in general, or uh, it's got a higher overall uh, overall rating. So definitely so explore. Much. Yeah, Thanks definitely explore by that. All right, I could talk about this all day, as you can tell. I want to leave you time for your breakout sessions, y'all. Uh, but I'm happy to answer your questions. <laughs> Roy, for um, for two more questions, what do you think? 
Yeah, I think we should, we should take okay. a few more moments so we can abbreviate our breakout room. Yeah, because uh, because uh, there's a lot happening in the chat uh, right now. So, uh, but uh, I will choose uh, two ones, like two more um, uh, recent one are about the articles. Um, um, and there was a question if it's possible to search by topic and um, get um, articles from um, different sources. And actually early onwards, um, one participant was also wondered, wondering if apart from really reliability and mm -hmm. bias, if you also consider um, or rate um, relevance of a source. In, uh, in any way, is relevance a term you would use? Maybe those so, re relevance. Uh, yeah, I, I'd need to know a little bit, uh, a little bit more about that. But um, we do have a we do have a category uh, or like a sub a sub factor that we use sometimes uh, called importance. So if something is of extreme <laughs> importance, is a is a really broad concept as well. And so, like, what's important and to whom? Uh, a, a story about one breast cancer survivor is important um, to that person and other breast cancer survivors and to like community more more broadly, right? Or a, a story about uh, one you know Native American tribe uh, that that's important too. So we don't we don't just downrate things that are uh, for. Um, we don't make too many value judgments about importance, but if something that like affects everyone um, a lot, like uh, it, like especially you know within a particular geographic region, um, mm -hmm. you know, or it was a the type of investigative reporting that was very hard to find, it may get bumped up for Im importance. Um, if it's especially a certain genre that um, is, is especially uh, unimportant or like annoyingly unimportant <laughs> to a, a lot of people. The, the thing that falls into this category the most is um, tabloid gossip about celebrities, like salacious tabloid gossip that um, sometimes will uh, downrate that. But, you know, even a local story about, you know, the, um, you know, penguin running loose in the streets of our local city, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to downrate that <laughs> for importance. So, yeah, some people want to know about that. So, um, we, we do we do rate that that's a short answer to it um and then i saw some other uh, other questions in here oh topic selection we do not currently have the ability to sort by topic selection but let me show you one of our partners is ground news you may have heard of this it's a great app um uh, they uh use our ratings um to categorize things as left center right but they pull in from apis and sort by topics um you know left right center so let's um you know 44 news sources reported on this and they'll show you the left right center um you know spread on it so there this doesn't include any um any judgments about reliability, um, but it does show you know, where the things are being covered uh, left, right, center. So I recommend that. All right, uh, there is a question. Um, don't your uh, ratings depend on which articles are chosen to rate? Yes, uh, samples. So this is all, this is based on samples and we have the, uh, thresholds or samples to get on our chart in the first place and then we're always adding to them and we have an article selection methodology we uh, choose the most prominent ones for any, any particular news cycle so the ones that get the most shared and most widely read are the ones that um that come into our system uh because they ha they have the most impact so it's uh imperfect uh sampling but it's uh you know for things like the our major news sources we have um hundreds of uh, samples for uh, for many of those. Um, the newer ones, more obscure ones, we might only have like a couple dozen on there, but like the very basic minimum is like 15 samples. Uh, but we, we don't put anything on there until we uh, feel like we've gotten a big enough spread. For example, something like RT, Russia Today, that's a, that's a really tricky news source. We made sure we had 60 articles on that before we even put up a, a first score. All right, um, real quick, uh, I'll, I'll just end on a couple of things. Um, so Media Bias Chart uh, Interactive uh, Education Pro is um, that what I just showed you, that full version, all access through your school to all of our data. You can download it in CSV files. You can sort it and filter it however you want. And then uh, if you have time, if you have the blessing of time in your class, we have Zuma News Literacy Program to teach students how to rate, like you can have access to the software as well and curriculum, but not, you know, the challenges, I will let you know up front, it's really hard to find the time to implement it unless you have a dedicated class for it. Um, 
All right. Are we going to go to breakout sessions? We are. All right. Try. We are. So first of all, thank you so much, Vanessa. The chat has been going crazy. I've got all of those chat messages. Um, so Renee, if you could not put me in a breakout room, I'll get those to Vanessa while other people are doing. Um, I'll pull up a slide for just a moment and I'll drop these messages in the chat, uh, conversation starters for you. Um, we invite you to consider a few things. So many of you have questions about when and how and why to use AdFontis. You see strengths and weaknesses and opportunities. So strengths, um, in what ways does a tool like the AdFontis Media Bias Chart open up opportunities for substantive dialogue around media literacy, the principle of objectivity in journalism, and our polarized media environment? Uh, some of you have concerns, and rightly, because uh, we want to make sure that we are teaching media literacy, not just giving one resource and then moving on to the next thing. So here are some weakness type questions. In what ways might the Ad Fontis Media Bias Chart explicitly or even inadvertently create challenges for educators as they attempt to use it when teaching media literacy? And then last but not least, uh, what are these opportunities and how might you use them? So Oh my God, it always cuts off right in the middle of a really great point. Did somebody experience that like I did? Yeah, damn, oh man. All right, Troy, you wanna see what people had to say, what they learned and what big ideas came out of that small group discussion? I think we do. And we'll, we'll, I wonder if Vanessa had a chance to look over some of the questions in the chat, if she wants to say anything really quickly and then maybe we'll hear from one or two of the breakout rooms. <laughs> Um, look, I've talked enough. Let's hear from you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll pick on my breakout room in particular. So I'm not sure if um, Joyce or uh, Christian or um, Elizabeth uh, or Mahadi might speak up. But we, we got into a little bit more of a conversation about all sides and the rankings and how different sources go through that methodology. Um, so I don't know if any one of the four of you would like to jump in real fast. Christian, I talk a lot. Why don't you take over? Yeah, just just real quick. So we um, were, were talking about a possibility of comparing um, um, articles from different sources based on the same topic to get a better idea of um, how that maybe um, because if you just um, evaluate articles according to um, criteria um, in uh, within one article and you stay within one article, it's not clear. To, to figure out what what other other um, news agencies does uh, and, and other news articles um, what they use which criteria and um, so maybe one approach could be to use um, to search, to look for the same topics in um, and in different um, yeah news media um, um, I, I, I've got uh, we, we do some of that work for you so this is for uh, we do uh, make that available through our, our system. Let me just show you real quick. Um, so each week we pick what we call our carticles. And these are nine articles about the same topic from across the media okay. spectrum. So this one, um, these are about, uh, like these are all about the border. So you'll see that the, like the dates every week, these are older ones, but um, mm -hmm. so every week we'll put in articles that are about roughly the same topic. And we mm -hmm. have our carticles, which are more like advanced reading level. And we have starticles, which are for uh, younger uh, audiences and uh, we'll pick less uh, polarizing things, but we've got things like, you know, the January 6th commission, uh, you know, nine articles about that, um, you know, uh, vaccine, uh, vaccine mandates, uh, Simone Biles, um, you know, uh, the Arizona recount. So each week it's a particular topic and we, we put those in our subscribers, um, you know, uh, systems as, so you can have them, uh, you can also put in your own articles, but that, that piece of work is sort of a lot of work to do. So we, um, go and select them for you and you can use them if you want. And, and we, um, we have them, uh, we show our analyst ratings of them. Uh, cause our analysts rate these articles every week too. So these are articles for, um, last week and the week before, et cetera, about the particular topics. Oh, okay. Great. Wow. That's fascinating. Does anybody else have, a, 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 an idea that came out of the, uh, discussion group, something you'd like to share an important idea or a thought provoking idea. 
just uh, raise up something that uh, Brady just put in the chat. It looks like Belina had a great phrase, using this as a way to poke at your own filter bubble. So I don't know if either of them would like to talk about that really quickly. <laughs> well, I just mentioned that, you know, when I show this to my graduate students or even my undergraduate students, they're always surprised to see their sources listed um, the way they're listed um, on the actual ad fonts piece, which is why I, I really like it. And we were talking about how, you know, we, so it's hard for people to understand why different conversations are going on. But when you put this up, you can actually see why these conversations are going on. And so it does poke at the filter bubble. It makes you question, you know, maybe the problem is, is that you're not listening to what the other side is actually talking about, which is why you only segment information in a certain way. Um, so I think that's incredibly important. And then I also mentioned this because I just, I don't know if they ever called you, Vanessa, but you, this was a big discussion on the Michael Smirkanish show. I, which was I, was on, on that show, I was on that show the following okay. week, yeah. <laughs> I was there the week earlier when they were like looking at it and before you had actually then gone on the show, he had talked about the hill. Uh -huh. and how he wasn't really like he didn't like where the hill was listed on your actual spreadsheet and i thought mm -hmm. that was so interesting because mm -hmm. once again what does that say about what we perceive about information mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so that added to the conversation everyone's got their own sample right yeah. and it's everyone's got a, a smaller sample than uh you know than one that, that could be arrived at by you know dozens of people right so literally no one agrees with the placements of uh, everything on the media by show because it's not it's no it's nobody's actual reality. No, yeah, but he wasn't right. He wasn't that unhappy about where he was. He was a little like in the middle about it, but he was good. But yeah. just building on that idea about filter bubbles, you know, I know Spotify has a thing where you can, or sorry, sorry, Pandora, where you can kind of set your adventurous parameter. So either you're going to listen to music that's all very similar or you can listen, they'll throw in some other things. Mm -hmm. And it seems like there, there's an opportunity to use a tool like this so that people can have their news feeds have more diversity or less diversity and kind of make that a, something that's choosable. What a great observation. Hey, listen, uh, Troy, we have run out of time. So I wanna give uh, Vanessa Otero a big round of applause from everybody at the Media Logs team. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, listen, what do we have coming up next week? Uh, not next week, but the week after next. I think, can you guys see my screen right now? Give me a thumbs up. Uh, mark your calendar for um, Tuesday, November 2nd. Uh, same time, same place. Uh, Troy Hicks is gonna talk about a concept called digital diligence. You'll wanna be there to continue to uh, share and learn and get ideas from educators from Germany and the United States and all around the world who are part of our community. Thanks so much for joining. I'm Renee Hobbs, this is the Media Education Lab, Media Logs on Propaganda. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.